Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Chi. Um, long time no talk. Sorry for the radio silence. Been caught up with a few other things, but this weekend I finally had a chance to finish most of the firmware for the RetroTink 2X. So now it does audio capture over HDMI correctly, and um, it can do auto switching between NTSC and PAL. And more than that, it can do both line doubled and pass through mode, um, where it doesn't do line doubling, but it decodes either component S video or composite into RGB. So something like that would be useful, for example, if you wanted to use this as a pre pop processor for an OSSC, or if you had a device that could only take RGB, but your console only outputs S video or composite. Um, this is a simple, high quality way to transcode the analog video format to RGB. So for today's test, um, I have the RetroTINK 2X. It's connected up to my NES through composite video, and it's outputting to a HDMI to VGA converter back to my 20L5. Now you might ask, it's kind of silly, why would you want to connect uh, this thing to a 20L5? It doesn't need a line doubler. Well, the reason is because, unlike an LCD, this 20L5 can test all the modes that I'm interested in, 240p, uh, 480p, 288p and 576p all in one go. Just let's try everything um, all at once. So I'm going to boot up my. Um, so first I'm going to turn up, turn on the 2x. When you first power it up, it gives you a um, test bar, and I'm going to plug in the um, Nintendo into the composite video input. So it's black and white because it's in uh, component mode. Press the button three, two times, and now it's decoding the composite video, line doubling it to 480p. 480p, uh, 480-60p. And also show you pass-through mode. So here it's taking the composite video, transcoding it to RGB, and then outputting it as, oh, sorry, I think I went to the wrong, pushed the wrong button. Okay transcoding it to um, to 240p. I know it says 60i, but as you know, it's 15 kilohertz. 40i really means 240p. The, the, um, this PVM doesn't really know the difference. You might wonder what the lag is with this thing, and it's very low. I can give you a number, it's 150 microseconds, but better than that, I can show you firsthand by playing Duck Hunt. So the uh, transcoding process from composite video to, RG, uh, to HDMI back to RGB to this thing is so fast that it doesn't stop light gun from working. Um, this is in pass-through mode where it's do it out, still outputting 240p. Um, if I switch it to 480p, unfortunately the light gun doesn't work. I think it's because the light gun isn't sensitive to 31.5 kHz, but the latency is still really low as you can see in some of my other videos. It's still about five or six scan lines, so it's not going to really affect gameplay. Fortunately, 480p doesn't work with the light gun. Okay, so far um, we've been playing with the NES in uh, NTSC output. Now, a lot of pe uh, people have asked, does this thing work in PAL? And yes, it actually does. Now, here, um, being in the US, I don't really have a PAL device, except for my Raspberry Pi, which I have that new firmware that can output in 288p. So I'm going to take my Raspberry Pi, the composite video cable, Plug it in back here. Okay, first going to this PVM, the uh, 575, 580, uh, 50i, and then it's uh, looping the composite video to the 2x, which is then outputting again through RGB via the VG VGA to HDMI. And you can see 576, 50p. So this guy is um, effectively line doubling the PAL composite signal to um, 576p. And it also works in pass-through mode. Well, first, let me give you guys something more interesting to look at. Let's run 240p test suite. Yeah, not getting good. Um, so this is 576p. I can turn, and for PAL mode, I can also turn off line doubling and give you um, what really is 288i or what this is calling interlaced. Again, the PVM doesn't really know um, what 288p is. 
So again, so this uh, everything works great. Um, it auto switches between PAL and NTSC for both modes. It can decode compositor S video to RGB. Um, so pretty much all the features that I kind of wanted to get working on the 2X is now working. Um, in terms of what's left, I still need to do some more testing, actually a lot more testing. Unlike the uh, director tank for the Raspberry Pi, this uh, device is quite a bit more complicated. I want to make sure it works with a variety of HDMI um, displays. And um, there's probably a few safety issues I want to make sure that I got right with regards to the HDMI power supply. But I'm pretty happy that I was able to get most of the code working this weekend. And uh, thank you again for your patience and hope to be able to give you guys another update soon. And I uh, hope you guys uh, take care. Thanks again.